Ambassador, thank you so much for appearing on China Daily Slovenia special. Actually, I'm going to start by pretending I didn't do my research because the more I learn about your country, the more eager I want to experience Slovenia in person. So my first question is, if you can introduce Slovenia to a total stranger in China uh, with just three keywords, what would you say? Well, I would say green, very diversified, and dynamic. I think these are the words that would uh, very well define uh, Slovenia. To actually, to many Chinese people, it seems that Slovenia is a forgotten corner of Europe. So I want to know how many Chinese tourists visited Slovenia last year, and what's your expectation on this number this year? I don't think it is a forgotten corner of Europe. I think Slovenia is the best kept secret of Europe. But anyway, I think up till now, quite a few Chinese people discovered it as well. And uh, as far as I know, uh, they all like it very much. So uh, I think that last year there were about 15,000 Chinese tourists in Slovenia. But uh, we believe that there, there were many more because uh, we register only those who spend the night in Slovenia. But many come from Italy or uh, travel through Slovenia uh, to Austria or the other way around. So it happens quite often that they don't even know that they were in Slovenia because there is Schengen and there are no borders between the countries, among the countries. So uh, I believe that uh, Quite a few more tourists, uh, uh, Chinese tourists, uh, are coming and will be coming to Slovenia. Uh, apparently, you're wearing green today, and also green is a th it's a season theme color in China. So, may I ask, is there a kind of uh, holiday related to the color you wear, or? We don't have special holidays, uh, but we do like. Um, uh, n nature very much uh, and we are happy when the spring comes again but there is an interesting uh, day that we celebrate and this is 10th of uh, March and it is uh, uh, Gregor uh, uh, Gregor is the name of the saint and uh, it's uh, when the birds get married so that's uh, a nice celebration I say although we have also other celebrations Mm, uh, marking the uh, longer days uh, and we send the uh, candles, uh, lights uh, flowing down the water streams. Speaking of nature, I think uh, according to my research, Slovenia, the whole land is covered, 60% of the land is covered in forests and the drinking water is probably the purest among in the Europe or even in the world. So. I want to ask, um, what are your policies in regard of sustainable tourism? Because green tourism and sustainable tourism have become buzzwords in the sector of tourism recently. Uh, yes, uh, you are right. Uh, Slovenia is very green and we are doing our best to protect it. And uh, that is why we develop uh, we are not uh, uh, eager to develop mass tourism. We are trying to develop a kind of, uh, you know, uh, tourism that is incorporated in the nature and in the society of uh, Slovenia. And uh, I think we have been quite successful in doing that. We have a, a quite well developed farm tourism. Then on the other side, there are spas that are very uh, nice and uh, very healthy, first of all. Uh, so, and there is a seaside. We don't have big uh, hotels that would accept uh, big quantities of people. It's all uh, done to the measure of a human being. What does Slovenia have to offer tourists that they could not find in the countries like Italy? and Croatia. I would put another question again. 
what do other countries have that Slovenia doesn't have? We have more or less everything. As I said, it is a very diversified country. We have very high Alps. It's about 3,000 meters uh, the highest peak. Then we have uh, this nice hilly green uh, nature uh, valley. There is this Pannonian Valley uh, coming into Slovenia from uh, Hungary. And uh, we have Karst, which is a very interesting part uh, of, the, uh, of Slovenia, and uh, after which uh, uh, Karst uh, word uh, was accepted uh, uh, worldwide. And we have 42 kilometers of the seaside. It is not much, but it's a beautiful piece of land with four little old towns that are really remarkable. Is this the best time to visit Slovenia now, or it's in summer? Yeah, spring and autumn are the best uh, seasons, I think. Summer could be quite hot, but um, I don't think it's too hot for the tourists to wander around, especially if they go a little bit higher to the mountains or to the spas where they have water very close to them. So, uh, yes, uh, it's, uh, and winter is not bad either because we have very nice ski resorts as well. So I wouldn't say that there is, um, yeah, spring and autumn are the most beautiful, especially autumn because uh, then uh, the leaves of the trees uh, start changing the color and you have all this palette of uh, different colors from green, brown, orange, red, and it's really beautiful. Slovenia is one of the most culturally and geographically diverse states in the world, and um, it has obvious advantages in terms of attracting tourists around the world, but also poses certain challenges. I mean, apparently, most of the Chinese people barely know this country, so it remains a mystery for us. So I want to ask, how is your government promoting tourism in China? I mean, Slovenia tourism in China in terms of branding and inter-cooperation. Well, I think that we are doing quite an effort. Uh, we did translate uh, a lot of our brochures presenting different parts and different aspects of the possibility for Slovenian tourism. Then uh, our uh, people uh, from the tourist organization do come uh, from Slovenia to participate in the uh, uh, fairs, tourist fairs here in China. They will be coming this April as well, and I believe they will bring new interesting films and uh, information on Slovenia to attract uh, Chinese uh, friends to come and uh, visit it. My next question would be the concern of most of the Chinese tourists. Is it hard to get a visa? I don't think so. We are not very, you don't have very long lines waiting in front of our embassy. So uh, I believe that uh, visa wouldn't be a problem that would prevent Chinese tourists to come to Slovenia. If not in Beijing, then in other, in Shanghai or in uh, Chengdu, soon we will have in uh, uh, Chongqing as well a possibility, if not in Slovenian consulates than in other EU member states consulates it will be possible to get a visa for Slovenia as well. If you had friends from abroad visiting Slovenia for just one week, so what do you recommend them eat, do and see in Slovenia? You know Slovenia is not big so in a week you can learn quite a lot about Slovenia. We are only 2 million people, 20,000 square kilometers so uh, what would I say? Well, the first thing, of course, is uh, Ljubljana. Ljubljana is a beautiful little city. Uh, the center of the city is uh, uh, closed for traffic, so it's really a nice uh, walking space uh, where people can enjoy. There is a castle in Ljubljana as well, a beautiful river Ljubljanica. Um, uh, well, uh, then, of course, um, the next stop would be Bled. It is a, 
a lake uh, with a small island uh, in the middle. Then further, I would uh, venture further into the Alps uh, and uh, try to uh, reach some peaks. And uh, then, of course, it's important as well to see the seaside and cars. There is Postoinskayama, which is a karst cave, which is one of the biggest in uh, Europe and in the world, and where you can uh, visit it with a small train that uh, travels through the uh, space, underground space, which is uh, beautiful and uh, big. I see. So, Ambassador, how long have you been here in China and how are you how are you enjoying China so far? I've been here for two and a half years and uh, I've uh, enjoyed all the time. Well, it's hard work, it's a lot of work, but anyway, uh, it's um, discovering China, following its developments and its uh, role on the international scene. It's uh, I think one of the most interesting country to be at the moment. You are learning Chinese, right? Yes. <laughs> can you, uh, how, how long have you been learning Chinese and how far you can go? Well, I shouldn't admit that I've been learning for the whole time and I even started before. Um, well, I should even admit to you that I started learning in 71. In 71? Well, but then I stopped for another 30 years or even more, uh, no, more at least. Uh, I was in London to learn English and there was a colleague of mine in the group who spoke, uh, who was a Chinese, so he decided to give lessons to all of us in, in we asked him to give us lessons, so I did uh, start then and uh, it's already then that I decided that I have to go to China and finally I got here rather late. So, well, uh, I am still decided to, to, do, uh, to, to go on studying Chinese, although uh, it is a difficult language. Have you ever been to other parts of China, like traveling in other cities in China? Yes, I've, been, I've seen quite a lot. I've been to Shanghai, I've been to uh, Suzhou, to Shandong, to Yunnan, to Tibet. Uh, so, um, uh, Chengdu. Chengdu is a sister city of Ljubljana. Oh. And last year we celebrated 30 years of the sistership. So, I often go to Chengdu and I like it very much. So, um, no, I, I think I've seen quite a lot of China, and, uh, but I still have some time to, to, to see more. Ambassador, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you.